And now, it's time for another Dice Tower review with the Game Boy Geek. Ciao, io mi amici. Hello, my friends. It's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we are going to be taking in the sights and the smells of Italy. We're going to be running a restaurant, Ristorante Italia, from Elfenworks, from two to five players, ages eight and up, where we are going to be trying to run a restaurant and create some great tasting recipes and matching wines to recipes and, 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 and adding tables and going shopping for ingredients. It's a lot of fun. Let's check out the parts. Let's check out how it's played. And I'll tell you what I think. At the beginning of Ristorante Italia, you each get to pick your own restaurant in color. For example, we've got the red fish, got the yellow lantern, we've got the black cat, the big blue, and we have the green hill or tree maybe. In Ristorante Italia, you're trying to have the most points at the end of the game by creating interesting and yummy recipes as well as gaining money for your restaurant and running it as a business. Now, as you can see here on the board here, I'm going to talk a little bit about how the game is staged and how it plays, and we can go into some of the actions that people can take. At the top of the board, you'll see here there's a white chef hat uh, looking at uh, turn number one, and you can see that each turn essentially is a month in time, and as you see, the numbers go up to 12 because this game is played over a year of time. And so what we're looking at here is the first season, if you will, first three months. Each month, each person gets two actions to do. So at the end of three months, which means each person has taken uh, two actions three different times, we then get to a three scoring rounds. So essentially there's three action rounds, three scoring rounds. And then if you take this part of the board here and sort of look at it, it gets duplicated three more times. So essentially you're doing the same sort of thing and you're duplicating that over the different parts of the year. So let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the actions that you can take and then we'll talk about the scoring rounds. Now as you can see the game is set up, we've got three players here. They all start down, uh, their own colored chef hat starts down on the, the bottom of the, the chef hat, uh, uh, the score marker down here. We'll also see there's uh, five different sort of stores or markets that are available in the game. We have meat and fish and dairy and fruits and vegetables. And there's different things available in the market. So let's talk about some of the actions you can do on your turn. Since the game has both a basic and an advanced version, I'm going to talk about the, ba the actions in the basic game, and then at the end of the review, I will talk about what the advanced game does and how that opens it up for you. So in the basic game, essentially you have three things you can do on your turn, three different actions. Uh, one of them is you can uh, get a recipe. The second is you can buy wine. The third is you can go shopping. So let's talk about each of these in, in, in order here. Uh, when you go uh, and look for recipes, you can take any one of these. You have starters, first course, second course, and desserts. And you can take any one of these. It doesn't much matter which one you take first. And you take five cards of these, and you get to pick them up and look at them. Before you go into detail on the five cards that I've drawn from the starter section, I want you to make note of the board here that there's a place here with a single chef hat, and then here at the 20 points, there's two chef hats, and at the, 20, the, uh, 20, at the 30, there's three chef hats. So I want you to note that there's different levels of chefs that you can be, as this will be very important as you look at these recipes in more detail. So as we look at these cards in more detail, we see that all of them are starters, of course, because we took them off of the same pile as we have to. First thing to note is, is you look at the cards and you can see at what level chef you have to be, corresponding with the number of hats as we just showed you on the board. So in this case, since, since I'm not a second or third level chef, uh, these ones are pretty much, I, I don't really want them early, um, and so I'm pretty much left with a choice of these two. And they're both uh, baked potatoes and salted olives, they're both a single ingredient. Um, they would get me five dollars and four points uh, at the end of the round, and same here. So it's pretty much the same, so you probably look at the market and see if those things are already available. And we take a look at the vegetable market, and we can see that potatoes are not here, but olives are already here. So I'm probably going to take the salted olives card, since that one is already available in the market. So as my second action for my turn, again, you get two per turn. My first action, we got a recipe. My second action, I can get one item from any of the 
uh, stores. And of course, I like the olives here, so I'm gonna pay the amount that's here is one. I'm gonna pay one dollar and grab the olives, and we will put it in my cupboard. We will also replenish that market with another vegetable for somebody else. And it just happens to be olives again. There, there's at least three of every uh, uh, type of food for each market. As part of my shopping action, not just buying, but you can also clear a market, either before or after you buy. So if those olives hadn't been there and neither had the potatoes been there, as part of my shopping action, I could throw all these away in the trash can here for any given market and then refill it with all new vegetables. Hoping that if the thing I was looking for that wasn't there, now it could come up. Now my turn's over, but of course the third action, uh, the th third thing you could possibly do on your turn is buy some wine. And just like the recipes, you're gonna take five cards and decide which one that you like. And I have the five wines here that I get to choose from. In this case, we, we drew four white wines and one red wine. Now notice the recipe also has a wine on here. If at the end of the game, you have a wine in your restaurant that matches any of your recipes, you're gonna get a three point bonus. Uh, but uh, here, I do not see any of that match. And uh, from the wines, the red dollar is how much it costs that you have to pay immediately. The blue money, uh, sorry, the green money is the one that the money you'll actually get as income at the end of the round. And that, those are the points. So as you can see, for the really expensive, uh, expensive wines, you pay nine, but you'll get $17 in income and three points. So I'm gonna take this one. So what I would do is take the $9, everybody has a cup of your own color, which keeps your money. And so I would uh, give them the $9 to the bank and I would place the wine right here where my wine goes. As you can see, there's three gray empty bottles and you're limited to three bottles of wine in your restaurant at any given time. Now you didn't get to see this as I was filling the markets, but each store has its own compartment and nice little, very nice components to keep them. They're all face down and shuffled, so when you're pulling them into the market, you're not sure which one's coming in. So on the left we have the, veg the green vegetables, then we have the meat there, that's the red one, then we have fish that's all blue, and then we have the dairy that are purple, and then we have the fruits and nuts that are yellow. After each person's had a chance to take two of those actions, this will advance to the next month. Everybody will go around in turn order again, do two more actions, and then a third month. So there's three months in, uh, of doing two actions each, and then we get to the three scoring rounds. So let's talk about those. Now as we go into the first of the three scoring rounds, you'll see it's a sort of a, uh, a, a food critic looking guy. So as we go here, we go to the food critic round, and let's talk about how this one works. During the food critic round, you get to build any of the recipes that you've gotten and or gotten uh, a goods for during the, 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 the earlier rounds. So in this case, at the end of the, the first season there, I have a salted olives and a rice with gorgonzola. And we can see with the salted olives, I have olives and I have it in my cupboard. And to make this, I needed cheese and onion, and I have onion and cheese. So what I would do is I would take these, I would put them back uh, it, it actually in the trash can face down in each of the respective markets and I would essentially put these down underneath my restaurant. So from left to right we have starters and first course and second course and desserts. And I would place them here to let people know that I have done the uh, these recipes are completed and they're available in my restaurant. Each person will do that one at a time in turn order so that everybody sees what recipes everyone's done. Then in turn order uh, from first and around, people will add up the numbers of only the recipes they've completed that round or that season. And remember, a season is three essential turns around, and each turn you get two actions. And at the end of each of those, when we put these down, you add the red prestige points that you get for these. So in this case, I would have nine because I played these this round. Now after each person has said how many points they have gotten for that round only, the winner, or the one that has the most, gets to move their hat or their cook hat up three spots on the cook meter uh, the second place gets to go two, and everybody else gets to go one. And so the significance is, is at the end of the game, this is how many points you're going to get. But even more significant is, once you're at this level here where you can do two, or maybe even, uh, you know, recipes with three chef hats on them, you can see that uh, in, in comparison, if we look at a card that has one, two, or three hats, and they're both three recipes, you can see that the one hat gets seven dollars and six points, eighteen and nine points, seven and 12 points. So you can see that the point scales go up uh, as you're able to do ones with, with uh, harder difficulties. 
After that round's over, we move to the VIP auction round. Essentially what you're trying to do is bribe a uh, VIP to endorse your restaurant because uh, that will bring more people in the door. But how you do it is a closed bidding where everybody will bid a certain amount of coins. They will hold it out as a closed bid and everybody will, will say, show how many uh, things they bid. In this case, I bid six. The highest bidder will win the VIP uh, token and the star. The star is worth 10 points at the end of the game. And uh, the losers have to pay half their closed bid out. So it's really a, a tough thing to, 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 to figure out whether you want to really go for it all um, or not lose anything and not bid at all, but the losers do lose half their bid. And the third and final scoring round is the income round notated by all this money. Now let's talk about getting some income. For all the recipes that you have available in your restaurant that you've already made, and for all the wines that are in your restaurant, you add up all the green numbered coins there, and that total amount would be how much income you get this round. So this would continue again through the different seasons where we would have three months, then three scoring rounds, three months, three scoring rounds, three months, and the final scoring rounds, doing those all three actions. Getting recipes, going to the market, possibly uh, uh, throwing everything away in a market as part of your market, and buying some wines. So let's talk about how the last scoring works. Now we see similar symbols here for the first three rounds, but we get some uh, additional bonuses and there's a final last round. When we go to the food critic round, instead of just showing them the recipes you've done that round, we have to do something even better. Everyone picks their best one full course menu. So we have one starter, one first course, one second course, one dessert. And you are giving this to the, to the food critic to have your one best full course meal. And you're adding up the numbers of each of these four cards and the person with the highest number is going to get the golden spoon, which again is worth 10 points. Another inter interesting thing is, is in this full menu, uh, if you're able to get the same type of theme going, so if you look at all my menus, all my recipes here, they all have the vegetable tomato. So if all my four have a similar theme, whether it's the vegetable tomato or whether it's meat or whether it's fish, you get this little indicator in your restaurant and that will get you 10 points at the end of the game. Also, you'll notice that some of these specialties, there's a golden fork here, and then there's a flower for a family style. If all four of your uh, single recipes here have either all the fork or all the flour, you get to put that there and you get a 15 point bonus. So as you're going through the recipes of the game, you're really trying to not only look for points and money, but you're also looking to match up the themes in the, uh, of the different recipes in your final course. If I had gotten the golden spoon, it would pretty much go right there in my restaurant. For the next round, the VIP acts the same way as before, close bidding, winner gets the VIP and the star, which is 10 points, losers have to pay half their money. But then when we go to the income round, we don't get income like normal. Everybody else after this bidding round, basically the person who has the, the most money left over uh, gets this last star, which is 10 points. That's really interesting at this point because here you're bidding for the star and the VIP uh, and the most the person that has the most is going to get here So you can either try to not bid anything and then hope that you're going to automatically have the most money from everybody Or you could try to really throw everything at this and get this star So there's a little bit of strategy here as to which one you want to bid for and then we go to the final round that we'll talk about now This is the national cooking tournament and essentially it's very easy Everybody looks at the one recipe card that they have completed that has the highest point value on it. And the person with the highest value is going to get two of these golden spoons to put in their restaurant. And the second place person is going to get one, with each of these being 10 points at the end of the game. Here's how scoring looks at the end of a basic game. I have crossed out two of the rounds that are only for the advanced game. And essentially, you get points for all the points in the menu items that you've done. Any bonus points from the 10 bonus points from the golden spoons and the stars. The point track on the cook media that we showed going up to the left side of the board. Uh, any of the bonuses of the themes on your final course, whether you got the fish. In this case, remember we got the vegetables. You'd add up those bonus points there. If you had any specialty uh, with your full force course meal with the, the forks and the uh, flour, you'd get uh, 15 bonus points there. And here's the matching wine. We mentioned earlier, if you match wine with any of your recipes, you get three points. So we have those there. And then you'd simply add them up and total them up. Now let's talk about the advanced game. Since it does add double the amount of actions you can take in your turn, this extra board comes out to help you with this. So in addition to the normal actions, which was going shopping, um, getting recipe cards, or buying wine, you now have some other options. The first option is to buy a table and expand a table in your, di in your dining room. So uh, here you would pay nine, you would get $13 on the income round, and it's worth 
four points uh, at the end of the game. Now you can buy these tables anywhere and depending on the amount of players it shows you how many tables are available to buy. After the first season you could buy a, uh, an upgraded table which is worth 16 then you'd get 22 income and it's worth seven points and again however many you could get during uh, depending on how many people are here and then during the last uh, two seasons um, you have to at least be on round number seven you would pay 20 get 27 and get nine for the luxury tables. And so as you can see, as the game goes on, you get more money, you can spend more money to get more dining rooms, to get more money and more points. These are similar to buying wines, except these can get more expensive, but they actually uh, give you even more of an economical boost. So these are one of the options you can do. Another one is a special touch spice uh, icon here. You got these two sort of uh, brownish cubes. Again, depending on how every round they'll get filled up to however many players are there. And for an action, you can take one of these cubes, and during the rounds that you are at have the food critic, and you're um, you're comparing the amount of points in your recipes as somebody else, if you're tied or if you're close to being tied, you can use one of these to essentially inflate your value by one per cube. So if you had three of these and your you had ten points that round, and somebody else had twelve, you could put all your three cubes, use them, and you would beat them for that round and move up the cuckoo meter faster. Another thing you do is take a cooking class. Again, it starts with a different amount depending on the amount of people. And you essentially pay $10, flip it over for this round, and you get to move up one spot on the cooko meter. The last thing is you could take a bonus card. So these bonus cards really give you a lot of different uh, things that you could do. Most of them cost money of the, the cost here, but some of the things you can do is, for example, you decide who wins all ties that you're part of instead of the normal tiebreaker. Or when you go shopping, you may directly buy from the butcher reserve crate. So if you're having trouble getting an ingredient, you can just look for the ingredient you want and get it. These ones with the 1x is a one-time use. At any time, you can play one recipe card with one chef hat more than your skill. And that's pretty big because you don't have to be high on the cuckoo meter, but you can get more points for that. So there's all different types of bonus things that you can do. Each round, this gets, uh, at the end of each round, these get cleaned up and, and newer ones come on. And the second half of the game, they're actually even more powerful. So those are the four different sort of things that you can do, which doubles it in the advanced game. All right, well, there's Ristorante Italia. I can't tell you how much I love this game. This game is great for families and it's great for gaming groups. I love the fact that it gives you two different ways to play it, the basic way and the advanced way. Now, granted, if you're watching this, you're probably a gamer. And if you're with your gaming group, you could probably just start right out with the advanced way and they'll probably pick up the rules pretty fast. However, if you're playing it with, a, like for example, my family, who I played with over the weekend, uh, and they don't necessarily play a lot of games, I started with the basic game. And even that was enough for them to see that there's a lot of stuff going on. So the basic game's great because it allows great rules and you only have three options on your actions to do things. But even with those three options, you're, you know, the, thematically this game is great. You're, you're trying to find these nice recipes. Oh, and by the way, these recipes you can actually get online from an Italian chef, which is awesome. So you're building these nice recipes. People are really getting into, ooh, look what I made, and a starter in the first course, second course, dessert. And they're really getting into the theme of this game. It makes it really easy to really feel like you're in a restaurant. And then once you have those recipes, you're going to the store, you're getting those, the, the, the ingredients to make those, then you're finding wine to try to match to it. Uh, and then with the advanced game, you know, you're, you, there's more things. Those bonus cards really are game changers. Once you understand some strategies, uh, those bonus cards can really help you out uh, you know, the special sauce uh, and, and the cookbook moving up fast. It just allows you for pretty much double the amount of choices. The thing I love about this game is I've played it probably close to 10 times and I still have not found like one strategy that wins. There's multiple ways to win this game. Do you go right after all the recipes and go through that way and try to go the points route? Or do you really early try to grab wines and make tables and go the economic route and try to win every bid, including maybe the last two? Um, or do you really concentrate on maybe a little bit of both, but really just getting the, you know, the theme of your final uh, full course meal to be the same, or the vegetables, or, or uh, uh, salmon, or the fish, or the meat, and trying to get the bonus points that way. I love that you have a lot of options to figure out which way you're going to go for the path to victory, where there seems to be a lot of paths to victory, and I really like that because the replay value is, you know, high because of that. Now the component quality is amazing. It's great, the little chef hats, the restaurants that everybody gets with their own name is really cool. Um, you know, even the tokens of all the, the components are top notch quality in this box and there's a lot of them. So the components are great, the gameplay is great. Um, 
I can't say a bad thing about this. The only thing that maybe if I had to try to find something bad is with five players, uh, there can be a little bit of downtime if you're with newer players and they don't really know what they want to do and they look at five recipe cards and they're thinking, thinking, you know, that's maybe possibly the only downfall. It actually plays great with two. I played it with two, played with my wife, played it with a gamer um, as well. And you know, two works great, three works great. I'd say three is probably my favorite. Four is good, five, it takes a little longer to get to your turn, but I wouldn't turn down a two player game either. So overall, I love this game. It gives you a lot of choices. If you're playing it with non-gamers, you have little choices. Open it up for gamers for a lot of choices. Multiple paths of victory, great components, great theme. Mwah. Theme all over the place. You will feel like you're running a restaurant when you're done. If you haven't checked this out yet, it's a disservice. You've got to check out Ristorante Italia. Thank you so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <coughs> <coughs>